For my new house, I've gone all out, and that includes making it smarter than I am. Not exactly a hard feat. From windows that automatically shade themselves to reducing unwanted heat gain into the house to ensuring my airtight house doesn't suffocate me in my sleep. I've been going a little overboard on adding smarts to pretty much everything I can, and I'm still not done. Now, while I recognize that going nuts with smart home tech isn't for everyone, at the heart of what I'm doing is about saving energy and ultimately money, which is a pretty universal desire. So with that in mind, let me take you on a journey into my Mensa level home to hopefully inspire some ideas for smart tech additions to your own home. I'm Matt Farrell, welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Incogni, but more on that later. So let's not waste any time here. The first one up and the thing that I planned on from the very beginning phases of my home build project was smart shades on every window on the house. Now, I'm not gonna lie and say that I did this purely for energy gains. They're insanely cool. Even my wife has said that it feels like we're living in some kind of sci-fi future house when all the windows in a room open or close in sync. But the real power of smart home technology is the automations. Now the house can take care of itself even when nobody's around. I've got some light sensors in various rooms of the house, even outside the house, and a good example is my office. The sun is blinding in the mid-morning hours of the day, but how the sun tracks in the sky changes throughout the year. And on overcast days, it's not a problem at all. Well, I've got an automation that will automatically close the sun-facing window if the light level coming into the room is over 2,000 lux. Then another automation raises the blind automatically around midday when the sun is out of direct view of that window. I also have a Tempest weather station on the outside, which takes its own light level readings. I just recently set up an automation that takes its lux level readings to help determine if it's an overcast day or not at my house's exact location. If it's overcast, windows will stay open during the day. If it's super sunny, certain windows will drop at certain times to help shield the worst of the sun coming in. It's gonna take some tweaking over the coming months to make sure that it's adaptable enough to change with the seasons. In the winter, getting a little extra heat from the sun into the house can be a benefit. So I'd wanna keep the sun facing windows open, but in the summer, I'd wanna keep them closed to help keep the house cool. The ultimate goal for my house is to achieve net zero energy production over the course of a year. I have some solar and home batteries in my house and implementing smart home tech like this can help with that goal. Is this excessive? <laughs> yes. Necessary? No, but shading windows at various times of the day and year can have a big impact on energy efficiency. One study from the Illinois Institute of Technology found a 25% reduction in heating and cooling energy consumption with automated motorized shades. The actual amount will vary based on the type of covering. For instance, a honeycomb shade will provide more insulating punch than a roller shade. In my case though, we already have triple paned tilt turn style windows that are extremely energy efficient. Because of that, I didn't think there'd be a sizable difference between the two, so we opted for roller shades around the house. And for full transparency, Lutron did help me out with some of the shades and switches, but the reason I wanted to go with Lutron was my personal experience with them in my previous house for about five years or so. In my old house, my Lutron cassette of light switches and remotes were the most reliable home tech in my entire house, period. And so far it's the exact same thing this time around. Now, speaking of controlling light into the house, there's the lights inside the house combined with presence detection. Actually, this is much more than just lights, but automating lights and devices turning on and off, depending on what's happening in the house. I have motion sensors, millimeter wave presence sensors, and Bluetooth beacon tracking working on our Apple watches throughout my entire house. And yes, my house knows what room I'm in. And if you're concerned about the big brother online privacy aspect of that, don't be, I'll get into that in a bit but there's something else that can help you take back some of the control around your online privacy. And today's sponsor, Incogni, can help you with that. I've mentioned this before, but I've signed up for a newsletter from a small online retailer. And after I did, I saw a major increase in the number of promotional emails I was receiving from companies I've never heard of. It actually just happened again, just again recently. That happened because that company sold my information to a data broker. I'm sure you've experienced this too. Incogni can help you with this. We have the right to request that data brokers delete our information, but it takes a lot of time and effort. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and then just sat back and relaxed. You'll see updates on your account for which data brokers they've sent legal requests to and which ones have complied. It couldn't be easier. I've been letting Incogni stay on top of this for me for a long time now, and I'm really happy with the results. And I've noticed a huge difference. If you wanna take back some of the control around who has access to your personal information, give Incogni a try. The first 100 people to use the code UNDECIDED at the link below will get 60% off Incogni. Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. So back to what I'm doing with presence tracking in my house. The person-specific presence tracking is all in Home Assistant and locally controlled. 
That powers some automations that turn on key devices in my office when I walk into the room for the first time during the day, like my computer speakers and lights if it's dark. But with person-level presence tracking, if my wife comes into the empty office, it's not gonna flip on the computer speakers since she never uses the computer. You can really dial it in. And yes, it's a major convenience factor, but it can also be a nice energy saver too. Whatever is controlled by a smart light switch, in my case, that's Lutron could set of light switches all around the house, or smart outlets, they can help cut off the phantom drain of electricity when nobody's around to use those devices. This is extra true in my home studio, which is really only used when I'm recording these videos. When that's not happening, every device in this room gets switched off completely, with the exception of the handful of smart outlets themselves, but that's a very small amount of power. A side benefit of using smart switches is being able to easily reconfigure your house too. I've already bought a bunch of extra Lutron Pico remotes and added them to the areas where my wife and I have found that we missed having a physical light switch. You can't nail light switch locations 100% of the time before you're actually living in the house. For instance, I added an extra island light dimmer next to one of the kitchen entrances, or in my home office next to one of the doors. It's kind of the desired path principle. You can think you've got all the pathways figured out in a new public park, but inevitably you'll find worn down pathways forming through areas of the park you didn't anticipate. An often overlooked area of homes is air quality, but not in my house. I may have gone a little overboard here. Now, I've got air quality sensors in all the major rooms of the house that track temperature, humidity, particulate matter, and CO2 levels. It's that last one that I was really interested in tracking because this is a very <laughs> airtight house. I was trying to figure out how to turn my house's dumb energy recovery ventilator, or ERV, smart when fate intervened. Someone from Shelly reached out to me on my Discord server with a solution that fit the bill. Now this is not a sponsorship, but they did send me this Shelly Plus One relay that I hooked up to my ARV. I was blown away by the versatility of this thing. If the CO2 levels get too high in any room, I've automated the system to put my ERV into boost mode for 20 minutes, or to boost things if the humidity level in the bathroom gets above 80%, which is handy when taking a shower. Now the lungs of my house are now fully automated. I also have air filters in various rooms throughout the house because I have pretty bad allergies, and all of these are linked into the same system to automatically ramp up if air quality dips below any threshold that I've set. And kind of linked to that, I've also set up an automation to automatically ramp up the ARV if the kitchen range fan hood is switched on when I'm cooking. That helps to get the smells and particulates created from cooking outside of the house more efficiently. How I did that leads right into my next aspect of my setup. Since I have a span smart electric panel in my house, I have per circuit energy monitoring of everything. My range hood is on its own circuit, which is how I'm able to make that automation work. If I see the power increase on that circuit, I flip the Shelly relay on my ERV for the boost mode, turn off the range hood and the ERV ramps back down again. But the real power of the system comes in with being able to track how much energy my solar panels are generating during the day against how much energy the house is currently using in relation to things like charging an EV. I've been testing an automation to charge my car when excess solar power is being produced that we can't otherwise use. I'm still learning the ins and outs of our new house, but our 17.2 kilowatt solar panel array has been producing more energy than we're able to use during the day. I've been really impressed by it so far. I've got a whole video on that, which I'll link to in the description. Span smart panel and the span drive EV charger have some awesome built-in features to take advantage of time of use electricity rates already, but they're gonna be rolling out additional features to enable the kind of charge on sunshine type of feature down the road. In the meantime, I've kind of rolled my own. I won't get into all the details, but because I've linked my span into the smart home platform Home Assistant, I'm able to trigger something similar myself. I'm really looking forward to them rolling out the official feature because it will really simplify things and make it extra reliable, but it's still awesome to be able to truly charge my car off of sunshine already. Now add on to all of this, the appliance specific data that comes from smart appliances themselves. My Rheem heat pump water heater has an app called Econet. My water furnace geothermal system has Symphony. And even my water usage in the house is getting tracked by Finn. Both Econet and Symphony break down in great detail on how many kilowatt hours are used over the course of a day. This allows me to gamify the experience of trying out new settings on heating and cooling our home and hot water, all to maximize our savings. Now I've got some of this data like our water usage and energy consumption getting pulled into Home Assistant for a handy high level dashboard to track all of the changes I'm making and what the results look like. It's really kind of nerd nirvana. I'm still tweaking and evolving my smart home setup, but everything I've done is about maximizing our energy use to save money with some nice extras thrown in for good measure. And I'm running most of this smart home stuff locally with systems like Home Assistant, Unify Protect Cameras, and Homey Pro, so I have no fears about the big brother angle or losing my internet connection and things not working. 
With knowledge comes power, which is why all of the data these apps provide is so important. It allows me to make educated decisions on what settings I try, how to adjust what we're doing in our home, and set up automations to help us achieve our goals. You don't have to go as nuts as I did with a smart home, but hopefully there's some bits of inspiration in here for you. And do you have any smart home ideas or gear that I should try out? Jump in the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. And thanks to all my patrons who get ad-free versions of every single video. Your support really does help us keep delivering these videos every single week. If you'd like to support the channel and get early access to the videos, check out the link in the description. I'll see you in the next one.